Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to talk to you about some big updates to our Git filter. The Git filter is typically used to just look inside of an object and get a value out of it. The Git filter also allows you to specify a default value if the key that you're looking for does not exist inside of the object. We have enabled support for inline expressions right inside of the Git filter allowing you to traverse your data in more complex manners. You can think of it as an alternative to using loops and conditionals to get the exact pieces of data that you're looking for. If you haven't yet seen our video on the brand new expression data type and the accompanying syntax, I definitely recommend taking a look at that before you dive into these updates to the Git filter. Let's hop over to Xano. I'm gonna show you how it works and then we'll walk through some examples. So here we are in Xano, very simple function stack. All I'm doing is creating a variable. It's just an object with three keys and values. And then we are returning that in the response. So we can see what that looks like here. Now let's say I want to get a specific value out of this object in another variable. So previously I would reference the variable and I could use dot notation for this. So I could say I want a, b or c or we would use the git filter and the git filter is really helpful if you are not sure if the data that you're looking at is always going to have the value that you're looking for because if it doesn't then the git filter allows you to specify a default value in its place so if we were going to use the git filter to look for a we would just go ahead and apply that filter here we'll set our path to a because that is the path that we are looking for we'll save and we'll run this and let's take a look at the debugger and we can see that we get that value from the key of A. We can do the same thing for B or C. So let's go ahead and do C. Go ahead and save this and run it again. And we can see here that we now have the value of three returned. So what I've just shown you is how the Git filter has always worked and will continue to work. Now let's talk about how we have expanded the functionality of the Git filter. What if we were looking at maybe a list of products and we wanted to only get products that match certain conditions? So here we are in another example endpoint. This time I am calling an external API to get a list of products and I want to apply certain conditions to that data so I am only returned certain products. Let's go ahead and just run this with only the API request and we'll take a look and see exactly what it is returning. So over in the debugger, we can take a look at the response and we can see we get 300 products. They all have names, descriptions, prices, percentage discounts, ratings, and a stock value as well as a brand and category. So we have a huge list of products here and we need to go through this list and we need to determine which products we actually need so in this first example, we are going to be returning all products that have a price greater than 700. So how would you do that currently in the function stack, just using normal functions and filters? Well, the first thing we would do is we would create a variable. This variable is an empty array, and all it does is hold the returned products that match our qualifications. Once we've established this array, we would then use a for each loop to loop through each of these products one at a time, and we would use a conditional statement to look at the price to see if it is greater than 700. If the price is greater than 700, then we use an array add to end function to add that product to the model variable that we established earlier. If the product does not meet this condition, then we just go to the next iteration of the loop. And then finally, of course, that is returned in our response. And we can see that right now. Okay, so here is our result, and we can see that we have all of these products with prices greater than 700. And of course, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way. It will always work exactly the way that you expect. But what if we wanted to set up something like this a lot faster? Let's take a look and see what this would look like with the updates to the Git filter. So here is my new Git filter. We are looking at products.response and we are getting the results. Again, if we look at the API response, we can see we start with response and then we have result and that is what contains our list of products. 
So we navigate to products.response and we use the get filter to get the results. But then we have this expression here that says, I want to look to see if the price is greater than 700. The two dollar signs here essentially just represent the item that we're looking at currently. And then we are, of course, referencing the price value specifically. And then we have the greater than operator here to determine the condition in which the data should be returned. This is all built using a super easy to learn standardized syntax that you can find in our documentation. So with this one single expression, we have avoided creating an additional variable using a loop to iterate through the products one at a time, and finally leaning on a conditional step to determine the products that we actually need. We just apply a get filter with a very simple expression. And with that, we can run this again. And you can see we have our products with a price greater than 700. Let's iterate on this example a little bit. What if we not only wanted to find products with a price greater than 700, but we also wanted to find products with a rating greater than four and a half. So once again, we have our standard functions and filters method here where we are creating our variable, establishing a loop, and then we're using a conditional, but instead of just the price, we have the product rating there as well. And then of course we add the result to our array. So when we run this, we can see that in action. Okay, and here we are, we have our products and we want to look at the price and the rating. And we can see that it looks like all of these products have a price greater than 700 and a rating greater than 4.5. And this works just fine. Let's see what this looks like if we use the new updated Git filter. So here's our Git filter and here is our expression. So what has changed from the previous example? In this expression, we've used the AND operator to let the expression know, hey, I have multiple conditions that I want you to look at when determining which data to return. So we're looking at the price is greater than 700 and the rating is greater than 4.5. So when we run this, you can see as expected, we are returned the same results with all of our products with a price greater than 700 and a rating greater than 4.5. Let's keep going. So here is our third example. Again, just iterating on the same thing, but we are checking the price, the rating, as well as the stock count. So we want to not only return products with a price greater than 700 and a rating greater than 4.5, but we also want to make sure that that product is in stock. So when we run this, we of course get the results as expected. So we have price greater than 700, our rating, as well as our stock count. All looks good here. If we were going to do this using the updated git filter, let's take a look and see what that expression would look like. So here we have our results price greater than 700 and rating greater than 4.5 and stock greater than zero. Again, just using a very standardized syntax. So in running this again, we can see that all of these products match our conditions. And we've done all of this without having to build several steps in our function stack. We just type in an expression super quick and we're good to go. I hope this is starting to give you an idea of the power that is available to you in this updated Git filter. I want to show you one more example to drive it home. Okay, so taking a look at our final example, we're still working with the same data set, but we have just introduced a much more complicated conditional to determine the data that we want returned. So we're of course getting the product list, establishing our empty variable, and then starting our loop. And now let's take a look at the conditional statement. So we have essentially two different sets of conditionals here. So the first set is looking at the product category and just making sure that it is a smartphone. We're then looking at the price and we want to see if the price is greater than 500, but not just 500, it's 500 plus the discount percentage multiplied by five. We're looking at the product stock and making sure that that is greater than 10. And then finally, the product rating to make sure that is greater than 4.5. Or, and this is where the second set of conditions comes into play, we want to look at if the brand is Apple and the price is 800. So items can be returned if it matches these or these. And you can see, of course, conditionals like this as you get more and more kind of in the weeds with different things that you need to be quantified. 
it can get a little bit complex. But this does work when we run it, we are returned the products that we expect. So you can see our list of products right here. Now let's take a look and see what that would look like using the Git filter. So in our expression, we are looking at the result key inside of the products variable. So products.response.result. We're first checking the category to make sure that it equals smartphones. We are then checking the price to make sure that it equals 500 plus the discount percentage multiplied by five. As you can see, we're using the double dollar sign to reference that object. We're checking the stock to see if it's greater than 10 and then checking the rating to see if it is greater than 4.5. This operator here, of course, you can see listed in our expression documentation. Once again, definitely recommend taking a look at that before you dive into using these in the Git filter. And then we have our second set of conditionals right here. So checking to see if the brand equals Apple and the price is greater than 800. So we'll go ahead and save and we'll rerun this and we will get the same list of products as expected. So of course, the whole point that we're trying to drive home here is that you can do this with standard functions and filters. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It works perfectly fine and it's totally valid. What we wanted to offer here is essentially just a more extensible way, an alternative way for you to write expressions like this and execute them much faster if this is something that you are more comfortable with. And of course, this also gives me the ability to, maybe this use case applies to someone in the Xano community. I could take my expression and just copy and paste it right into a community post. So essentially what we've done is begun the process of enabling easier sharing of pieces of your function stacks with other Xano users. It's pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this gives you a good starting point to dive in to these updates to the Git filter. We really hope you love it and we can't wait to see how you use it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or via support chat inside of Xano. We'll see you in the next one.